If you're new here, hi, my name is Rachel Carroll. I am the face of the Carroll Home Team here on YouTube. We help home buyers and sellers in the Space and Treasure Coast of Florida from Brevard County all the way to Martin County. I've lived here for the better part of 10 years and I've sold real estate for essentially just as long right here in this beautiful paradise. We've had the privilege of helping hundreds, close to th a thousand families now buy and sell real estate. So if at any point you wanna pick my brain, please get in touch. All of our contact information is in the description description uh, below for you. So let's dive right in. When people think of Florida, they usually think of palm trees and sunshine and tan lines and hurricanes. After serving our community for 10 years now and speaking with so many people looking to move into the area, I can tell you that a lot of folks worry about hurricane events. Are they in danger? How does it affect the price of their house and their insurance rates and their need for flood insurance? If a hurricane comes, will they have to leave? I made another video all about hurricane preparedness for our area. Um, if you want to, you can check that out in the link just above. So yes, Florida's coastal areas face hurricanes. We have a hurricane and a tropical storm weather season where it's most likely that we will be affected by extreme weather conditions. Um, that's usually from like September through December each year. And honestly, mostly we have rain showers, high winds and tropical storm watches. I don't wanna jinx myself, but as I stand here today, we haven't had a really bad hurricane event in many, many years. So in Florida, hurricanes are categorized based on their wind speed. The scale divides hurricanes into five categories with category one being the least severe and category five being the most severe. Now we don't typically uh, see recommendations to evacuate until the hurricane reaches a category like three or four. Um, it's really gonna depend on your tolerance and the preparedness of your home to weather such conditions. I will note that newer, um, newer and homes that have undergone recent renovations to like their windows and doors and roofs are a great option for Florida residents because they meet the updated building codes for wind mitigation. So for example, newer, newer roofs require more straps. The way that they're fastened to the home has changed since the early 2000s. They're more secure and the likelihood of them blowing off in like an increased wind is decreased significantly. So if you're looking at homes in the area, you and your realtor need to do your research on what areas are most susceptible. The tolerance of each individual family is going to vary greatly for, you know, weathering storm events. So you, I think you really just have to have that conversation as a family and with your real estate agent and understand what kind of homes are gonna meet your specific needs. All right, so if you're looking at homes in the area, you and your realtor also need to do your research on what areas are most susceptible to flooding. We live in Florida. Pretty much everything lies at or close to sea level, but certain areas and neighborhoods are prone to more frequent and severe flooding than others. An established and experienced real estate professional in the area should be able to guide you to your best and safest options. I'm also not advising you to avoid areas that require flood insurance or higher risk flood zones. I've lived in a home in a flood zone before. Our flood insurance at the time was quite reasonable and we loved the neighborhood so much that we were willing to pay for it. Um, so it's just gonna depend on family to family and you should weigh out the, the cost effectiveness of that decision. Um, but I'm not steering you away from again, like more flood prone areas. I'm just kind of giving you options and bringing things to light that you may, if you're not from this area, may not have considered if you're looking to move into the area. And if you don't have representation and you're looking for an area specialist to help you, call us. We have definitely got you covered. Okay, another worry I hear from potential clients is about sinkholes, which are a serious concern in many parts of Florida. But here's the deal, Bureau Beach's geology actually might surprise you. So sinkholes are a geological phenomenon that occurs when underground water dissolves the bedrock and creates a void. So when the surface layer can no longer support the weight above it, it collapses, which forms the sinkhole. Florida is known for its karst topography. It's characterized by a limestone bedrock, which is more prone to um, dissolving from the acidic groundwater that we have here. 
So the composition of this rock contributes to sinkhole formation and indeed parts of Florida do experience sinkholes more frequently than other regions. Vero Beach, however, has a relatively lower incidence of sinkholes compared to some of the other parts of Florida. And there are several reasons for this. So number one is its specific geological makeup. It might it's less soluble bedrock, all right? So it just, it, it's less uh, prone to the sinkhole formations um, compared to other areas in Florida, like the Gulf Coast region, like Tampa and parts of the Western coast, which generally has a higher presence of limestone. Land development and human activities also uh, can influence sinkhole occurrences. So improperly managed drainage and excessive groundwater extraction, uh, construction practices, um, all of those things can also contribute to increased sinkhole risks. So it's important to understand like, you know, general zoning and planning of, of the construction of the city, um, which, nowadays is not so much as of an issue right there's all there's always going to be some kind of developmental plans that are laid out before building occurs it's important to know on this topic that while some areas may have lower likelihood of sinkholes the risk is never completely eliminated in florida um, if you're considering moving to vero beach or any part of florida it's wise to be aware of this and um, of the like geological characteristics of the area and take necessary precautions. Um, get proper home inspections and insurance cover coverage. And if you're worried about it, make sure it includes sinkhole protection. All right, so next is taxes and insurance, which are often a big consideration for movers. Property tax rates can vary significantly between Florida counties. So comparing Indian River County's property taxes to other counties in Florida involves really understanding things like millage rates um, and how they apply to different types of properties. So Indian River County, which encompasses Vero Beach, has historically had relatively moderate property tax rates compared to some other counties in Florida. However, the specific comparison of property tax rates does depend on various factors, including the city or, or town within the county, school district taxes, and other additional levels of exemptions. It gets quite complicated. But for instance, a uh, county like Miami-Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach, they often have higher property tax rates due to higher property values, greater urban development, and varying local government funding needs. All in all, what I'm saying is it's quite complicated to be able to accurately compute what your property taxes are going to be. Our typical rule of thumb here is to look at whatever the current property taxes are. If you're gonna go buy a home, for example, what is the current owner paying? And then factor in that most likely it will increase. What did they purchase it for? Um, how long have they owned it? What are their current property taxes? You can look at all of this information with your real estate um, professional or whoever is helping you. And then you can guesstimate approximately how much you think they're going to go up from there. For example, again, let's say if the homeowner purchased the home many, many moons ago for let's say $250,000 and you're purchasing it today for $500,000 because property taxes have increased greatly. Or, I'm sorry, property values have increased greatly. You're gonna bet your bottom that your property taxes are going to go up incrementally. So that's a conversation that you can also have with your real estate professional, your lender and your title company all together and just Again, it's quite complicated to actually calculate how much the taxes are gonna go up, but we can do a guesstimation and then you can factor that into your decision-making process. Vero Beach, again, historically has really um, reasonable taxes for our area and for the greater um, state of Florida. I would, if you're asking me, I would consider them an affordable um, tax rate. Now let's talk safety. Crime rates can make or break a decision to move. You can do extensive research on the internet about city um, crime rates, including Vero Beach. Like any place, we have neighborhoods that are more or less prone to crime, uh, be it violent crime or house crimes, like robbery or breaking and entering. 
Vero Beach's statistics reflect that it is a, has a slightly less crime rate than the average U.S. city. That doesn't actually tell us too much. It's been my experience that Vero Beach is a very safe place to live with a small town feel. People are friendly and you get used to seeing familiar faces. As with any place, your activities will typically determine your susceptibility to criminal activity. I feel that myself and my children are safe when we're out and about here, and that's extremely important to me about where I live and I operate business. Again, if the crime rate is something that you're really worried about, I urge you to do your own research online. There's a lot of different sites that are gonna give you a lot of information about the crime rates here in Vero Beach and the surrounding area. If you're not familiar with the area, I always urge people to come and visit, drive the city, go out to eat, um, go do activities and feel for yourself what it's like to live here. Like any place, there's pockets of areas that are more susceptible to crime and less susceptible to crime. Again, again, it's going to depend on what activities you're involved in. Are you putting yourself in a position uh, that's more susceptible to certain negative activities or not? But again, I stand by it a thousand times over. Vero Beach is a very safe city. I feel extremely safe. This is a wonderful place to raise a family. It's got a small town feel for a city um, and everybody is very friendly. It's worth me saying it twice. Remember, every place has its quirks, but here we've got a community worth exploring. Don't forget to drop a comment below if you have any questions or thoughts. And until next time, stay tuned for more tips and insights on making your move a breeze. You can always check out my other videos on this channel. I also have a playlist all about Vero Beach with all of those great informational videos. And you can also find us on Google. Just Google the Carroll Home Team Vero Beach Realtors and check out our 200 awesome five-star reviews. Give us a call and quick, go click that subscribe button.